Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophynet the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Thronebreaker the Witcher Tales. We're in Blackbrook Vale, the green valley of Mount Carbon near Mahakam, which is, uh, well, very dangerous as it seems, since it has been overrun by monsters. Nobody knows really why, but it has been overrun by monsters, and seven expeditions preceded us, and they all died. We can find their stone pillars with their story on along the way, but it seems like, yeah, everybody's just gone. And the amount of monsters we've encountered so far doesn't seem to indicate that that's gonna... Well, that would be enough to take out everybody here. Your Majesty, this cemetery is the final resting place for the Dwarven settlers from all expeditions, all seven expeditions to Blackbrook Vale. The first are centuries old, while others only a year. No doubt there will be precious tributes buried with the bodies. We could order our soldiers to recover them, but I warn you, milady, that they won't like it one bit. Yes, let's even board that up. We shall leave our own tribute to honor their memory. And we get morale from that, getting us the max. I'm just going to check out the map, because I feel like this is already the bridge leading out of the Vale. And it seems like it actually is. I'm wondering if I checked out that cave over there before we move on. Oh yeah, we did. Never mind. That was the corpse of that dwarf. Never mind. Okay, weird. We'll move on. Oh, there are still monsters here. So that's... Those are ghouls, right? All ghoul? Blackbrook Vale. The name itself embodied infamy. Neve arrived expecting misty ravines, decrepit trees bound in spider's webs and swarms of bats. What she saw was a warmly gurgling stream and the valley's gentle slopes blanketed in crocus blooms. Only a village of abandoned, ruined huts and a cemetery stretching to the horizon behind it attested to the valley's grim past. The village seems shrouded in a guise. Be not deceived, said the queen. Reynard! Some men to search the environs for any sign of life. The blood-curdling roar that came from the ruins a moment later proved the Queen's caution warranted beyond any doubt. Interesting. The village seems shrouded in a guise. The Cursed Valley, if not for the aid of the Lydian army, the Dwarven settlers would likely have soon perished, shredded by the wretched beasts hidden among the ruins. With the help of Meeve and her men, they stood a chance of surviving, however small. The infamous Blackbrook Vale did indeed seem to be cursed. Hint, hauntings are more common than you think. And those seem to be foglets, which could explain, because the fog that foglets actually disperse allow them to create illusions. Protect the settlers! Never fear! I shall protect you! There we go, egg! We are shrouded in impenetrable fog and we have an oversized Algu. Whenever Meeve plays a card with even power, boost a random ally by 3 if all damage a random enemy by 2. And then on round start spawn impenetrable fog on all enemy rows by the stout foglet. So that's not going to do anything else. Which is great. So let's put down a regiment drummer that's going to boost nothing because he doesn't have time anything. Like and then Meeve Warhammer. Let's put the war wagon up top and end the turn. So every turn on turn and boost self by one if impenetrable fog is on the battlefield. When this unit's power surpasses six spawn of foglet, one only one. So we had that before. So drummer getting the war wagon out. Can't take it anymore. And then the wagenberg. So he's boosting the Foglets, which triggers their abilities immediately. And then the Arathusa adapt to double boost. Oh, oh, Lady Margarita told us of this. The drummers, so get more drummers into the field. There we go, six damage. And that one Foglet is down, so we stop the loop there. Great. This is a shortened battle, so we should be fine. More Foglets. And we get damaged by the fog as well. But that's not too bad. Uh, let's put down another drummer. And then we'll start pulling those drummers Left, out of our right, deck. Left, right. We could use the war wagon. Uh, what, the Wagenberg? I should have done that first, apparently. But yeah, let's skip. 
summon an Ecker or boost self by one. We know how to deal with that. Now, uh, let's use Meave to put another drummer on the... Hmm. Seems like these are base copies. So if I have... Yeah, I have one more boosted one. Then I should play the Mahakam Ale. I should have done that before, actually. There we go. Then use the drummer to get another drummer here. Again, again. And then the blacksmith only can get uh, trinkets from the graveyard, so I kind of misplayed him. Uh, no biggie, just gonna hey, add him to the world. And then attack the row over here. And then in the next turn, I'm gonna actually kill the Algul. Should have done that first as well. I need to focus. Because this is pretty powerful. The Markham Ale is really, really strong. So now, with the Lyrian Arbalest, I have enough to actually kill the Algul. So let's do that first. So no more boosts for you. And end the turn. Okay, so I don't have any other choice than to just go with it now. So let's use the Regiment Drummer, and I don't get a Forager. Then I need to be careful and use the Hush to own the Lyrian right? Lance Connect, and then take a look at the board. Seven seems to be the most prevalent, so let's just damage all the units with seven, and then all the ones with six. Then I'm gonna keep Isbel till the end, and I can't use any of my cards here, which is sad. I'm hoping he can actually destroy one, but uh, these cards are, yeah, going down the gutter. And my Mahakam Ale is actually working against me here. And those are gonna keep boosting themselves. Okay. And Egg is gonna be useless here, sadly. So, yeah. Sadly, I need to throw Egg away, so I need to use his bell, which is gonna win me the match, luckily. Uh, and then, yeah, throw Egg away. <laughs> that hurts. That really hurts. I need to be careful with the war wagons and the drummers, because they just put too many units on the field. Because if that keeps happening, I'm gonna lose. Like, I mean, the, the board is completely filled with units at the moment, so... We had the same disadvantage there, so we won. But it wasn't a glorious victory there. Okay. Following the victory, the settlers' hopes seemed renewed. Could the beasts they felled have killed the previous lot of colonists? Perhaps the curse that had long hung over Blackbrook Vale was at last broken. We thank you, your majesty. The settler's leader said, slipping the satchel from his shoulder. You have granted us new hope. And a new home. I don't know about that. I feel like Meave was hinting at the fact that Blackbrook Field doesn't look like that. The dwarves had rolled up their sleeves, were prepared to go at the huts to repair them, when one of their number cried out. Hold! There's something here. Something reeky. A voice most familiar, thought Meave. Yes. For it belonged to Barnabas, the rescued inventor. The gnome had elbowed his way to the fore, stood on his toes, extended his nose, and inhaled through it like a pointing hound seeking out wildlife. Ignoring all queries, Barnabas had then sat down on the brook bank, filled a glass flask with water, and was now holding it up against the sunlight, dipping into it the tip of his tongue and some strange scraps of paper extracted from the depths of the pockets of his patched coat. Finally, Barnabas stood, brushed his backside clean, and announced his findings. Well, we know with some certainty the reason for the settlers' demise. Twere not beasts, no. They prowled in later, drawn by fresh graves. T'was the water. Oh, roll your eyes and whirl your fingers all you want, and then peer at the brook. Nary a fish, all poisoned by subterranean fumes. There we go. That explains why 
the dwarves who were experienced with uh, killing monsters would actually be defeated by said monsters. The dwarves hemmed, hoard, and grumbled, and were a heartbeat from abandoning the veil for good. Then Barnabas reached into his satchel and extracted a device of his own making he termed an aqua purificator. That is to say, a water cleaner, as odd as it may seem. You need but siphon water through this straw. Then drink up, worry-free. Thus Meave rode out of Blackbrook Vale, deep satisfaction in her heart. The dwarves extolled her for being bold, shrewd, and wise while Gabor ensured this praise would likewise reach the meaty ears of Elder Who. There we go. Another clan to our side. Which is, it's cool that we, you're actually almost forced to have Barnabas at this point, because otherwise they would have likely died as well. We're the dwarves worse. of Mount Carbon. Hoo, hoo, ha. Hoo, hoo, ha. A two hammers is our sign, is our sign. That was a nice song. That was a very nice song. What else? Ooh, that was a lot. We feed those suffering hunger. Hoo, hoo, ha. Hoo, hoo, ha. But our foes we smash asunder. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, yeah. Spill me ale and get a pound and hoo, hoo, ha. Hoo, hoo, ha. Such is life neath the mountains. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay, ay. Another one. Another one. Spill me ale Aww. and get a pound. Okay, Smas. Fill me ill and get the pound and that's That's some lyrics for you there. That was and that was look at that. You can actually see the water purific purific purificator. Purification machine. The water purifier, as they would say in normal English. But yeah, look at that. It's not just a small machine anymore, it's a big straw now. That's a nice detail that they add that to the bank there. And we have a marker for fast traveling. And the music has completely gone, by the way. Don't know why that happened. But let's just gather that. And head further down south, which appears to contain another uh, city there, right next to the Vale. But first, there, there's this cave to the west here. So if we go higher, with, yeah, there's a large cavern over here. The rumors Gabor had overheard were true. Scouts returned with news of a cavern at whose mouth lay rotted logs. An indication that something of great weight may have been rolled inside. Chests full of gold, for instance. Then again, poor tracks clearly showed some beasts had made the cave their home. Right. Decision time. Enter, or scramble back down. Said Gascon, rubbing his hands together for warmth. Please hurry. This frost is downright biting. Okay. So, enter the cave. We've scaled this high. Foolish we'd be to descend empty-handed. Fall in behind me! The queen took the four, sword in one hand, torch in the other. The flickering flame's glow illuminated the cave's interior, casting long shadows. Meave was certain some horror would leap at her at any moment. And she was not at all wrong. Okay, there we go. Is it a standard battle? No, shortened battle. Forgotten treasure, what else might these forgotten and accessible caverns hold? A magical rune imbued weapon forged centuries past. Sapphires, rubies, and topaz, carved and polished by long dead dwarven jewelers, perhaps immeasurable mountains of gold. To find out, the Lyrians had only to slay the monsters that dwelt their depths. Eliminate the crazed Shalemar. So, yeah, they really like their Shalemars in, uh, in Thronebreaker here. So one round, so give me a second to collect some cards. So there we go. Just gonna put down the pitfall trap. Anyone you struggle with strong reservations when entering monster infested pits? Asking for a friend. Asking for a friend. Okay, the pitfall trap. Damage all units on this road by two. Whenever a unit appears on this road, damage it by two. There we go. So that's gonna give us a nice addition of damage. And then we use Meave to pull. Uh, so that's the Wagenberg, which is fine, I guess. I'm going to start off with... You know what? Let's start with a war wagon. We have a forger in our hand at the moment. So there we go. So the Grace Chilmar, whenever an ally is destroyed, 
Reduce this unit's timer by one, then play a random unit from your deck and damage it by two. When this unit's timer ends, Meave wins the battle, but I can't... Oh, the timer is on the top left there, 20. Okay, every three turns on turn start, randomly damage enemies by a portion of Shalemar's current armor. So that's the same as we've seen before. So let's put the drummer... Yeah, the drummer down. Again and again and again. And then we can go with the Grey Rider in a second. So the Pitfall Trap is going to continuously damage all those uh, Neckers As over there. Can. Then we have the Regiment Drummer, which is going to pull the War Wagon on the one hand. Tiny battles, hungry like a wolf on and the Wagenberg on the other. So pulling that back. Let's end the turn. So there we go. So that's one unit destroyed, right? Yeah, his unit is... His, uh, his count went down. Now, if I move a Forager over here... He's gonna move the Grey Rider over there as well. Then use Meave to pull hmm, an Arbalest up. And we can't do anything just yet, so let's just hold off. Okay, so we're getting damaged, but of course the light infantry unit's gonna damage one back. And that destroys another unit. Jesus, there's a lot of... Consume an ally and damage an enemy by its power, 6 armor. Do I need to use Egg on one of the Shale Mars already? I think I will. Um... Yeah, let's just use Egg God blast it. on one of the Shield Mars. Then use the Forager oh, once. There we go. Then use the Wagenberg on that row. And that takes out two more Neckers, which reduces the, the counter there. And that's about it. Some more and more damage on the Nekids row, which is fun. Okay, and he killed the Wagenberg. First things first, use the Forager to clear up this side. We got six damage over there. Then we have a double, a double usage of the Lyrian Lance Connect if we want to. Um, let's use the Lyrian Arbalest over here, so that's nine damage, which will kill the Nekir. We get another Shalemar, okay, great. Probably could use another Regiment Drummer. We get the Lyrian Harshduk, which I'm actually gonna put over here. Of course I'll manage. Actually, a full week. Then... The Regiment Drummer, with just this thing. To the last! And our final unit. We won't get another turn, so let's just use the Isbel right now. Use the Forager to get Isbel and the Medic. Giving us a bit more space on the lower row. Just in case we pull another... Yeah, Blitz unit. There we go. Arbalest with 6 on. damage on that one. And... Excitement over there. A time to a time to sow. And then I don't think I'll be able to kill anything else. But there we go. And there we go. I actually gave... What the hell is this? I gave another charge to the, the trophy as well, because it's adjacent units, of course, so that's boss. And there we go. Oh no, I actually need to kill the Shalemar. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, we're trying that. So back at it, I have a bit of a worse hand, a worse hand than before, but... I have kind of a plan with the Legion Lance Connect. I boosted him to five charges. So if I now start attacking those Neckers... Oh, wait, 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 fuck. Uh, I have three more charges, so that should be enough to take all of them. So if I now use a Rivian Sapper... Don't you worry yourself, I'm able to destroy one, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight, counting with trophy nut, nine, ten, eleven, and that's pretty much it. And then hit the shield more again. And there we go. Damaging, 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 and they don't get, he doesn't get the abilities of the passive ones, although those shield more look horrifying. I didn't get a single drummer there, so that is sad, but that should be it. So his counter is at 7 now. There we go. So... There we go. Another unit goes down. This is gonna hurt. So, Lirin Hajduk. To give now. extra charges to the Lance Connect. So he's at two again. Could use that already, but I'm not going to. So as long as he's boosted, he's fine. Oh my god, I'm gonna be in for a world of trouble in a second. There goes Xavier. So if I use the Lirin Horn now. I damage them all by two. Which reduces the armor of the shale mark, so reduces also the amount of damage I'm going to receive. But still, I'm at the edge of being destroyed here. So they all go up one, but they did lose their armor. Ow, 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 ow. That's not a portion of their armor, that is literally all their armor. And there we go, loses all of that. Now, I have... I think I've got this. So if I use Meave Warhammer again, no reason, just to give the Lyrian Lance Connect another charge. Then start with the 7s, 6s and 5s. And that gives us a bunch of units to destroy with the Rivian Sapper again. Oh, so uh, yeah. count with me! 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, 5... I think it's already over. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and we do eleven again. There we go. And it's all over. Wow, there were a lot of shield mars and bridge trolls in this deck. Come on. Ah, okay. <laughs> I was afraid I was gonna have to win this by points as well, because that wasn't gonna happen. Victory! As soon as the last beast had fallen, the Lyrians took to seeking out the treasure. Soldiers dispersed throughout the caverns in a rush, penetrating every last corner. Finally, one called out. Got it! Got the treasure! Right here! Treasure! Shiny stuff! A number of steel-reinforced chests lay up against the cavern wall. Meave blew the dust from the lid of one and lifted it with some difficulty. She had hoped for gold and jewels, Bars of Mahakaman steel at the least. Instead, she saw thousands of time-tarnished copper coins with a hole through their center. What's this bloody crap? Tokens of some sort? Uh, aye, that's right. Holy Goldens, we call them. They're, uh, currency in Mahakam. Get our wages in them. Use them to cop victuals and hooch. What of arms, armor, tools? Nah, all that's given to us. Clan provides it. Is that what you need? Weapons? Oh, feel the agent now. Brought you here for no reason. Okay, Dan. Thank you, Gabor. With these tokens, they can be exchanged for other coin, can they not? Temerian Orans or Novigrad crowns? Aye. A doable in theory, but not at all clever. Rates are crap. See, the elders keep them low to make life difficult for dwarven folk. Discourage them from leaving Mahakam. Okay. So common dwarves don't use gold, actually. That's interesting. What's this? Common dwarves use no gold? You cannot be serious. Yet I am. What good's gold to them? Clan gives them all they need. And victuals and hooch beyond need, they get for tokens. Yet you trade with humans. Gold coin you take for your goods, the coin must serve a purpose. What is it? We hoard it all. In vaults. Great piles. Down bottom lie ducats dating from the reign of that dozy ham shanker, King Dagrid. And you do not put it to use? Acquire anything for it? Then it's true what folks say, that you love gold too much to part with it. Hoard it for pleasure, as dragons do. Point of fact! 
That there's pure drivel. Gold's a metal like any other, just yellow. We hoard it for our safety. Your safety? I fear again, I simply don't follow. Couldn't it be simpler? Soon as human folk get it in their heads we's a thorn in their side, we'll spend it. All of it, in a jiffy. Excess coin supply, that's called. Matter of days, gold'll be worth less than sawdust. And you're tossing banks and economies, bam, on their arses. There'll be nothing left of them. They'll cave in faster than a mine shaft with rotten props. That's actually interesting, because they hoard all the gold. The value of gold goes up, naturally, because the supply that's available reduces over time. But if they were to spend all that in one go, then the value of the gold would drop immensely. And yeah, the whole economy would drop down since it's based on the value of gold. Why are you all me? With human folk for neighbors, we dwarves got to be damn vigilant as sheep round wolves. So how can these tokens serve me? We must trade them. Even should we get a pittance, it will be something. The soldiers demand their pay. Ah, your bums out the windy. Fighting men want full dixies and tankards a hooch. Coins but a means to that end. What do you suggest then? As I've been saying, the tokens we use to purchase nourishment and mead and what you've got in those chests, why, that'll do to fund a feast the likes of which Mahakam's not seen since Brewer was sworn in as Elder in Chief. Indeed, and that would boost morale immensely. The fighting men will eat and drink their fill, carouse about and forget their due and pay right quick. And, and invite the local dwarves to feast with you, and the clans will look kinder on you too. Interesting. So, we'll exchange the tokens for gold or we'll throw a feast. The rates are crap, so I don't think I'll get much gold out of that. So, uh, fine, we'll throw a feast. Caution be damned. Your Grace. I feel obliged to remind you we are at war with Nilfgaard, and every copper... Should go to building our army, I know. But we live but once, Reynard. Sir Gabor, take the tokens and arrange me a feast so grand that Ebdahi himself shall hear us revel. As Meave's force could not possibly fit in a tavern, the feast was laid out in a storehouse. Crates arranged in rows served as tables and benches, while the windows were festooned with lion's foot and pass flower. Great barrels of mead, cognac and vodka were rolled in, and when the soldiers saw this, they broke out in cheers and laughter that lasted till dawn. Pour us another round, you lovable Lyrian bastards! <laughs> For he's a jolly good fair, uh, sorry, a jolly good dwarf. A dwarf could be a fellow. No need to change the lyrics for that. Um, ooh, Gabor Zigrin Plus. There was food and drink enough for the dwarves of the pass, who, with Meave's men, raised tankards in hand and voices in song the night through. To see them sharing tales and playing cards, one would not believe that anywhere down the mountains, through woods and across plains, humans and dwarves might, for the softest slight, leap at each other, murder in their eyes. There we go. A positive note on uh, the end of this episode. So yeah, and that was actually rhyming. I, I didn't intend to rhyme there, but it just happened. So uh, gonna take a little break. So thank you guys enormously for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, don't forget to like it right here on YouTube. And when we get back, we're getting pretty close to Mount Carbon, actually. So uh, to go to Davos Abyss for the summit meeting. So thank you guys enormously for watching. And I hope to see you in the next episode of Thronebreaker, The Witcher Tales. Goodbye.